All right, moving straight on to the amino acids. Next one is GABA or gamma amniobutyric acid. What a name there. It's mostly inhibitory. Um, it acts either directly or through a second messenger, depending on the receptor type or maybe lack thereof. It's found in the central nervous system, most of the cerebral cortex, the hypothalamus, cerebellum, retina, and olfactory bulb. So what that should tell you is that it plays a role in not only cognitive processes, but also sensory processes. It's an important inhibitor in the brain, and it's augmented by alcohol and benzodiazepines. Now we give people benzodiazepines like, you know, Valium or, or uh, I forgot the other one's names are, um, I think Ativan, is anti-seizure medication. So if it's inhibitory and you're having a seizure, which is where your neurons just start firing like crazy, it's a good drug to give for someone who's having an episode like that. Also augmented by barbiturate compounds, which also are known to have anti-seizure uh, capabilities or anti-seizure-like properties. Next one we have is glutamate. Um, this is mostly an excitatory neurotransmitter. It acts directly. It's an important exciter of the central nervous system, plays a large role in learning and memory. And uh, when someone has an ischemic stroke, so we're talking about a blood clot that's blocking a blood vessel in the brain, not an explosion of a blood vessel, what we have is glutamate toxicity, which is literally where, because it's such a strong excitatory neurotransmitter, it will literally stimulate the neurons to death, okay? Um, it aids in some tumor growth. If you ever looked at a biochemistry map or a metabolic map of, of your cells, you see this huge massive complex of, of different biochemical pathways that exist. Whenever you have cancer, it's a different biochemical pathway in some way, shape, or form. So cancer is, is really kind of a source of some very novel types of biochemistry for you know such a terrible disease that it is. Um, it also causes something known as Chinese food syndrome when it's in this form here, the monosodium glutamate. Um, this is known to cause migraines and arrhythmias. Why? Because it's excitatory, so it can stimulate your neurons too much to where you start to get a headache, or in the case of other types of neurons, it can make your heart rate go super fast. The next one is glycine, uh, also an amino acid. I feel like I'm taking a trip down my biochemistry classes here. Um, this is a picture of it. Uh, the R group is literally just a hydrogen. I love that. It's mostly inhibitory. It has a direct action. It's found mostly in the central nervous system. This is the primary inhibitor of activity in the spinal cord. And then strychnine, right here, blocks glycine receptors, resulting in really strong convulsions until respiratory arrest. So I don't know if you guys are a fan of comic books, but there's this part where Joker like poisons the entire city of Gotham and Batman. And uh, what results in is everybody curls up into a little ball and has all their muscles contracting. And so that's what this guy is happening here. He's having that strychnine uh, was, I think, what inspired it. Or maybe it was, it was actually pretty commonly used by mafia and mobsters and things like that. And causes that contraction and that smiling looking face. It's very disturbing. Uh, even kind of weird that they put that in a kid's show. But anyways... So the next ones are peptides. Um, these consist of uh, endor endorphins as one class of peptides. And what the word endorphin means, endo means endogenous, natural, made by you. And then uh, orphan, we're talking about opioids. So obviously opioids playing a role in blocking pain. So mostly inhibitory, indirect, usually via a second messenger throughout the entire brain and spinal cord, limbic system, hypothalamus, and it blocks pain by inhibiting substance P, which is also a peptide hormone that we'll talk about next. Its effects are mimicked by morphine, heroin, and then methadone. And you might be wondering, well, why don't I show a picture of it? But because these are long peptides, polypeptide chains, I have no idea how they are folded, how many different ways it can fold, and how many different conformations it can have. So I'm not going to show any pictures of that. But just know that it's a long chain of amino acids, otherwise known as a polypeptide or a peptide. The next one are known as tachykinins, uh, substance P, and then neurokinin A. These tend to be excitatory, since they're peptides, usually through a second messenger. Central nervous system in the cortex, hypothalamus, and the mesencephalon. Um, what's interesting about the mesencephalon, if you remember the tectum and tegmentum, remember that there's a part in there that plays a role with uh, pain response and, and certain drugs that inhibit pain response uh, uh, neurotransmitters. But anyways, also found in sensory neurons for helping to detect pain, enteric neurons of the intestine. It mediates trans pan transmission, pain transmission ugh, in the peripheral nervous system via substance P. I don't know if the P is for pain, but that's a good way to remember the P. We're talking about pain there. Also though, tachykinins play a role in respiratory and cardiovascular control. And again, because these are long polypeptide chains, I have no idea how they're folded, and I have no idea how many different conformations they can have, so I'm not gonna show a picture of it. 
Okay, next one is somatostatin, also mostly inhibitory, uh, indirect messenger, cortex, hypothalamus, hippocampus. <laughs> We're going through this stuff so much. Pancreas, but often a uh, released with GABA as a gut brain peptide hormone. And what we didn't mention was the fact that your gut actually has its own brain, its own little uh, ganglia that can respond to things. So yes, people who have often talked about taking SSRIs to treat inflammatory bowel disease, and that may or may not be true. But anyways, what's interesting to me is that it also inhibits growth hormone release. And again, just like all the others, I don't have a picture of it because I don't know how it folds and I don't know how many different conformations it can exist in. The next one is known as CCK, aka cholecystokinin, mostly excitatory. Again, second messenger because it's a large peptide. Central nervous system, small intestine. Um, involved in a lot of anxiety, pain, memory, and it inhibits appetite because it's also a gut-brain hormone. Again.